losses, who are going through memorial services, who is just having a hard time. And we all have them. So I'm hoping this video will serve as a way to help you guys that are having a hard time right now. And again, I'm no doctor, I'm not a counselor, but I'm someone who's gone through some hard times, who's had some rough days, and really, I mean this so sincerely, if I can save you one second of pain, of suffering, of struggle, or if I can spare you from making a mistake that I've already made, trust me, I've made a lot, that's what I want, okay? That's why I do anti-angel. I just really wanna help you guys. There's enough hard times in life. If I can help spare you from any, that's what I wanna do for you, okay? Now, the first thing that I want you all to know, you don't deserve any bad times. This isn't, if you're having a hard time, if you're going through rough times, it's not because of anything you did. It's not karma. It's not anything like that. It's called life, okay? We all have it. It doesn't mean you deserve it. You don't, okay? But right now you are going through a hard time. So I want you to listen to me and really, really understand what I'm saying to you. This will end, okay? It will get better, slowly. And there are days where you're gonna think, nope, not getting any better. Especially if you're grieving for a lost person. There are days that will sneak up and smack you in the head, you know? My mom will be gone five years this year, and there are still days where I reach for the phone to call her and then catch myself. Uh, you prepare yourself for the one year anniversaries of everything. And personally, I never found those hard, mostly because I was expecting them to be. It was the quiet, sneaky days that would get to me. It was going in a store and seeing something I knew they would love. Those were hard struggled so hard to always find her the perfect gift for Christmas or her birthday or whatever. After she passed, I found everything all the time. <laughs> but it's not just that, that we have a hard time. Sometimes it's our mental health that's causing us to have a hard time. And there's lots of videos I've done on that. Please rewatch them if you need to. Anything that can help, okay? I find a lot of times it's the struggle to let people know what we're feeling or how we're feeling and getting them to help us without fixing it. And I will say this as many times in as many videos as I have to. You are not broken, okay? This is something you're going through. You are not broken. You don't need to be fixed. You need a doctor's care because this is just, you wouldn't rely on uh, the drugstore if you broke your arm. You would go to a doctor and get a proper cast. Going to the doctor asking for help, no shame in it. It's the strong thing to do. You know, um, it was very hard for me to do it. I'm a big old hypocrite. <laughs> it took a long time for me to say, I'm struggling and I need help. And you don't even have to add the I need help. I'm struggling with my mental health is all the sentence you have to get out. If you can get that out to your doctor, you can get help, okay? Uh, you can ask for clergy help. You can ask for a public health office. Mental health line can help you. You don't need to have a stigma attached to it. And I'm going to tell you a little story. It's a hard story for me to tell. I did go through a clinical depression um, for things that happened when I was in my early 20s. Um, 
um, it was more of a reactionary depression. It was to things that had kept happening. And I had to move back home. I had lost my job. Um, my best friend was cheating with someone I loved. So I lost all of them too. It became very hard. Um, I asked for help. I got it and they gave me antidepressants. My family was not supportive. Um, when they found out I was taking antidepressants, they referred to them as my nut pills. If I got upset about something, I was told to go take a nut pill. Luckily, the person that I was seeing let me talk it out. They explained to me, um, especially when it comes to parents, they can be very um, reluctant to admit that there's a problem because they think they did it. They don't want to think that they did anything to harm you. So it's almost a defense mechanism to deny the problem. Fast forward a few years later, actually quite a few years later, and my mom went through a really hard menopause, a really hard menopause, and it put her into a deep, deep depression. And I argued with her all the time about getting help. And I said, you have to get help. That's all there is to it. Um, we kind of had an intervention with, um, with her and she was brought up to believe you don't admit those kind of faults. And so when she went for help, she ended up going on antidepressants and she came to me and she goes, well, I guess you can call them my nut pills now. And I said, I would never do that to you. Why would I add pain to something you're already in pain for? And she started to cry and she apologized to me so much. We ended up having a huge breakthrough in our relationship. Um, we were honest with each other. We helped each other. Um, we became support and it really helped her. It helped me. Um, and yes, there was a part of me that felt a little vindicated. I'm not that naive to say I wasn't a bit shallow about it um, but yeah just because things can be hard with the people you love right now understanding it doesn't mean they won't and I've said this before too show them this video show them my other videos um, show them articles in the, in the paper show them articles online get your doctor to talk to them you know you have to let people know that this is a medical issue. Um, mental health is the same as physical health, okay? You can't control it. You can't snap out of it. And when you're having bad days, you need a support system. And I want you to have that. And the people who love you want to be that for you. They just don't know how, okay? And it's a pain. It totally isn't fair that we have to teach people to support us, how to support us properly. Um, you know, we should just be able to ask for help and get it, but sometimes you have to teach the people you love what you need. And a big thing, we've talked about this before too, but a big thing is telling them, whoa, stop trying to fix it. Stop giving me advice. I need you to listen so you understand. And if they start to say, well, you could stop them and say, you know what you're doing right now? You're not listening. Because if you were listening to me, you wouldn't already be thinking of ways to help me. Okay? Don't try to think of ways. Just listen to what I'm telling you. It's hard to do, but I've always said this. You got to compliment sandwich it. Okay? So you got to start with a compliment. Tell them what you need and end with a compliment. Um, for example, I love that you're trying to help me. It makes me feel 
your support. However, this isn't the kind of support I need. I need you to listen. You know, this is a really hard thing for me to talk about. That's why I chose someone special like you to listen to me. See what I did there? Started with something positive, ended with something positive, but told them what I needed from them. Okay. And this, I learned this over years, okay? There are times I wish I had said this to people. I could have saved myself and them so much struggle, which is why I'm trying to tell you. Um, I'm just giving you my advice so that you kind of have it in your tool belt, okay? That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you build your tool belt so that when somebody comes at you with something, it doesn't hit you full force. You can kind of say, Oh, deflecting that, this is what it should happen. Um, because people can be so cruel, sometimes on purpose. I'm not naive. I've seen people who have been cruel on purpose. Um, they sense you're at a low time and they jump on it. Get those people out of your life um, as much as you can. Get them to talk about themselves. That usually shuts them up from you. Most people want to help you. They just don't know how. I remember um, when I, I lost my first baby, um, it was a ruptured atopic and it was very traumatic. Um, and I nearly died and it was emergency. So it was very, and I remember a very good friend of ours. Um, <laughs> the day before I had printed out a list of the things not to say to someone who's just lost a baby. Um, because I wanted to, to kind of put it in an email to people so that they understood a bit more. But I hadn't done that yet. And she called me and literally I was going down the list, checking off all of them. She said every single thing you shouldn't say. But she meant well, you know. And we talked about it later. And she's like, did I say any of them? I'm like, you said them all practically in order. <laughs> Um, if you know someone who's grieving, okay, the number one thing I would like to say to you, never start a sentence with these two words. At least don't. Just don't. And you're like, but at least they're not suffering. At least they're in a better place. Nobody wants to hear at least, okay? And if you don't have the words to say to somebody, Tell them that. I don't have the words. I don't know what to say. I just want to be here for you. That is joy to people who need someone. Okay? Um, my best friend Natalie, we've been friends since high school. And sometimes a, a hand on the shoulder is all we need. Um, I remember at my dad's funeral, I walked down the aisle. I was getting things set up for the service and she had been sitting in a pew. She jumped up. She goes, give me your purse. I said, thanks. Like she did. I didn't even have to ask her. She's like, give me your purse. She goes, what do you need? I said, can you make sure people have the directions to my house? Um, and they said, and can you watch out for so-and-so and because -so? she's a fainter and there wasn't, we don't even have to communicate that way. We just you know, and we can go um, a year without seeing each other. You know, but it's just like, you know, we're back to where we were as soon as we get together. Um, so yeah, sometimes you don't need the words. You just need to tell people you're there for them. And if you want someone to be there for you, tell them, say, I could have picked anyone, but I came to you. Can you just listen to me? Can you just hold my hand? Can you just have a cup of coffee with me? Can you tell me a joke? Can you go to a movie with me and get my mind off things? Whatever you need to get, especially when you're having a hard time, and I'm not talking about grief right now because that's a whole different thing, but when your mental health is plaguing you, when you're having a, just a rough time with it, trying to break out of the cycle can be really hard. and. It can be something as easy as let's go to a movie or 
um, you want to go for a walk or cook something different you know try to get yourself out of I'm not talking about a rut because I know people are going to tell you that oh you're just in a rut you just need to get out of it it's mental health that's not you wouldn't say that to someone um, with a terminal illness you wouldn't say not that mental health is terminal I'm just saying you wouldn't say that to somebody who had pneumonia oh come on get out of that bed just snap out of it you'll be fine you just don't okay so and you can turn that around to somebody too if somebody says you just have to snap out snap out of it turn around and say would you say that to me if I broke my leg get off that cast and just snap out of it no and they'll say but it's not the same thing and you say it is because what they're saying to you I don't really understand mental health but I want to help you so you just have to combine the two you say great you want to help me but you don't understand mental health can I teach you a little always ask and they'll say sure trust me they will and then you open a dialogue and sometimes just dialoguing with someone helps you okay I really hope this video helps you I, I hate the idea that you guys are going through rough times um, I just want to hug all of you I really do and I want to be here for you um, so yeah please find someone that you can talk to um, but the biggest thing too and listen to Auntie Angel for this my angels you're not alone you're not weird and you're not broken okay you are very special and you're just going through something right now. <laughs> that was my dog. <laughs> um, so yeah, just know that you are not alone, ever. Okay, and it can feel so isolating. Mental health, I always say this, it's a big old liar and it gets in your ear and it gets in your head. It's lying to you. I'm telling you the truth, you are not alone. Okay? Millions of people are going through this too. Okay? We are all in this together. Okay. I hope this helps you. And always remember, I love you. I value you. I honor you. And I'm so very, very glad that you were born. <laughs>